Hello, welcome to my class. How is everybody? Fine? Okay. So today we are going to do some serious work. If you consider, consider it serious, it is serious. If you, can, if you take it easy, it's okay, it's easy. Now, as you can see on the board, the Wastelands. Poem published in 1922, written by J. Eliot and also published by him because it was published in the Criterion and uh, a critical magazine that uh, Eliot himself was editing. Now, what you see in the beginning is not April is the cruelest month, as very often people say, but it's the first line. Students will say they have the tendency, tendency to say that it is April is the cruelest month. And actually, <coughs> it begins with the epigraph. The first line you can see is Nam Sipal Nam. It begins like that. So, the epigraph actually is a short quotation written at the beginning of a book suggesting the theme of the book. I think that if you go a bit deep into the epigraph and then try to study this, you can almost see you have ended half through, you have gone half through, uh, done half of the work already. As it is said, the proverb says, now what is the proverb? Yes. Uh, what is the problem? Uh, well, is it well begun? Well begun, yes. Well begun, half done. Yes, that is the thing. Well begun, half done, yes. So, like that, we have epigraph. Here, what happens, you can see the epigraph is written in two languages. Part of it is Latin and part of it is. Part of it is Greek, two classical languages, yes. Mind of Europe, tradition, yes. All these things are suggested here. So the epigraph, actually, the, the key word here is this verb, vidi. Vidi, vidi. What is vidi means? Vidi means saw, S-A-W, saw. I saw. Ego vidi, that is the full. Ego means I. Egoist, you say, no? Egoism, okay. that, that is, ego means I. So, ego vidi, vidi means so, I saw, I saw. You know, from this word you have got vision, or you can say video, video. So, these are the words that we have taken from this, this Latin word. Another point to note about these two classical languages is that eh, these two Means Greek as well as Latin, they are phonetic languages. Phonetic. What is meant by phonetic language? You know, it? What is meaning by phonetic language? Yes. What is the opposite? Unphonetic. Yes. Unphonetic is the opposite. Like happy. What is the opposite? Unhappy. So simple now. <laughs> yes. yes. So phonetic language means you write and read in the same way. So for example, suppose you have written now. V D V E D E V D not I in Latin we don't say I but we say E E E so that therefore is a it is what you call uh, you write and read in the same way when you are writing and reading in the same way such languages you call phonetic languages. But English is not a phonetic language, you know. Isn't it? English is not phonetic. You, you write in one way and read in another way. You remember your phonetic class, you know, phonetic class. Then how it began, probably the teacher must have given you a riddle, you know. And uh, the teacher must have, the professor or teacher must have told you to pronounce this. And uh, what you might have done is you said goti. Then the teacher will say, it is not goat, it is fish. Uh, I can improve that because laugh, L-A-U-D-H, L-A-U-D-H, laugh, see, F-E-L, O, W-O-M-E-N, women, we say, so, V-E here, and then, nation, station, etc. See, sh, sh here. So that means you can say fish, that is, that is what I say. Isn't it? Yes. So that's of course is a different story, but I'm just telling you 
that if when you read uh, the classical languages, they are phonetic languages in the sense that they are written and pronounced in the same way. So, so we say vidhi, I saw. What did I see? Nam sibalam kridam kumis. Nam sibalam kridam kumis. That is it. So ego vidhi, ego is also there. After some you will see that. Ego vidhi, I saw. For now means for simple noun. That is we call an accusative case, means objects. When the noun is in the object position, this is the form. Latin has its different forms for different positions. So here now simple noun quit them means indeed. Indeed. I saw indeed who Sibala Kumis of Kumi. Kumi says Kumi that is in Italy, place in Italy, Kumi, southern part of Italy, Kumi. So I saw ego so I saw for Sibala of Kumis Kumi. Could the mess in the I, mean, I did not see anybody else, but I saw this Sibyl. Sibyl means a prophetess. There are, according to the ancient beliefs, tradition, there are 12 prophetesses, 12 of them. But of all these, the most famous one was Sibyl of Kumi. Sibyl of Kumi. Why was she so famous? Because for one thing, she was very beautiful and very sweet. And Apollo, she was the oracle of Apollo. And Apollo wanted her to be his beloved. So Apollo asked her, whatever you want, whatever you want, you can ask any boon. And then he, she asked her for a boon, and that is, she said, I want the immortality. That's what she said. And then immediately Apollo said, okay, it is, it is granted. See, thinking that she would someday become his beloved. But actually what happened is, she did not become his beloved, that's another thing. And not only that, she did not ask for the boon in this prosaic way. I want, a, just as you say, I want a book. No, not like that. She said, I have got a handful of sand. So, I want as many years as there are grains of sand in my hand. And then Apollo said, okay, it is given. But there is another thing. What happened to her is that she forgot to ask for eternal youth. So that is the problem. So what happened to her? She asked for a boon that is immortality that was granted, but she forgot to ask for the boon of eternal youth. Understand? Now, what happened to this Sibyl of Kume? For two, three reasons. We can say she is the most famous. Most famous one I told you, she was, she was actually uh, loved by Apollo. She was Apollo's oracle. And the second thing is that, you see him, the founder of Rome, that is Aeneas. Aeneas, it was this symbol, this prophetess who prophesied that Aeneas will be the founder of Rome. Understand? And another point is that it was she who guided Aeneas through the dark kingdom that is Hades or the underworld so to take to meet his father who was in Hades. So for many reasons, for these reasons, what happened is that she had become very, very famous. And another reason I already told you that she was very beautiful. Understand? Yes. So there is uh, the speaker, who is the speaker we will see, but the speaker says, I saw, I saw the symbol of Kumi. So it says, Nam symbol nam kuiddas kuiddam kumis, kuiddam kumis. And as I said, ego ipse 
इससे ओकुलिस ओकुलिस में इससे ओकुलिस में इससे में भाई दैट इस रिफ्लेक्सिव्स हैं माय ओन आईस ओकुलिस में साइ में ही माय आईस इससे माय ओन आईस आई सॉ द सिंबल ऑफ कुमे विथ माय ओन आईस Not any other person. This is why some people say, "We go to America and say that." Suppose you go one to America, then you say, "I saw with my own eyes the president of America himself." That's the thing. Like that. So with my own eyes, I saw the symbol of Kume herself. That's the thing. So, and what was she doing in Ambala Pendari? In Ampulla, Pendere, Pendere, Pendere. You know, Pendant. This girl, so they have got something hanging here. So that is Pendant. It's hanging. So she was hanging where? In Ampulla. Ampulla means cage. You know, ampule. So pencil and say ampule. That is a short, very small bottle like thing. So that is like a cage. So he says, "Now, Sibulan, then Kumis, you go if say a police may be the in Ambala Pender." So I saw the Sibul of a Sibul of Kume herself with my own eyes hanging in a cage, hanging in a cage, and then he continues, "Yet, Illi." Uvedi, Uvedi, Dicherans, Dicherans. See, what is the meaning? Earth means hand. You know, in Julius Caesar, they say, in Brutus, Tom, Caesar, they say, Earth too brute. You know, and you too Brutus. So that is hand. He lead these boys. Uvedi means boys. These boys, Dicherans. Sir asked, sir or asked. We say now, say dictate. The word dictate, English word dictate comes from the general. To say, to say, to ask the general. Yes. So yeah, he lived with the general. So what is the situation here? There is a cage. In that cage, this prophet has grown very, very old. In her younger days, she must have been seventy-five kilos or eighty kilos. Now she has become four years. Now she is growing a old, a old, a old, a aged, a aged, a aged. She cannot die, right? So <laughs> she has been granted immortality, and she forgot to ask for it. See, so that is the that is the tragedy. Understand that? That is the tragedy in the situation. So here, what happens? She is hanging like this, like an object in a museum. She has become. And I, a, a thing that can be kept in the museum. Now she is useless. She has become shrunk now, guys. Wrinkled the skin. So then the boys are there. Why are you there? And what the boys said? The boys asked in Greek. Who was she? Now so the Greek language. <laughs> that was the so the Sibulla. See, see. Sibulla, Sibulla, Sibulla. He calling me Sibulla, Sibulla. T, 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 L, T. This is one of the voices. Sibulla, T means T means what? You can see if you don't know Greek alphabet, I'll just read out Greek alphabet. How do you pronounce the Greek? This is C, C. This is iota. So C, beta, C, upsilon, u, upsilon, lambda. The students, modern mathematics, they know lambda. That is the symbol used. 
again lambda this is the alpha they have got the alpha beta that is how the alpha beta the Greek alpha begins alpha beta gamma like that so this is sibulla not a sibulla c c see this is the pronunciation no? c c sibulla t t tau in greek t is pronounced tau when you pronounce the alphabet you pronounce it as tau but when you write like this it is t t i have to again theta you know theta this is used in mathematics epsilon a epsilon lambda epsilon iota and then zeta he said e t a this is a z the z z so he said teles teles not teles teles so he said boys ask he lived over in the chair these boys ask see get kum other is one word one more get kum see and and then this boy is uh, asked for said sibulla three teles 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 teleology you know, teleology in english we have got the teleology what is teleology means the ultimate purpose of energy investigation of the ultimate purpose of energy so they are asking sibulla what is the ultimate purpose why are you hanging like this then respond the bar illa press on the bar illa illa me she she responded in english we have got response so she responded what did she said she said appo a appo apota apota ne nu telu telu this is not w this is omega you know alpha and omega of things we say means the first and the last so apo this is pi pi r squared you study in mathematics apo O Omicron. This is O. Apota. This is nu n. Apo. Apota. Apota ni nu. Apota ni. Sorry. There is apota ni. Apota. There is only e here. Epsilon. Apota ni nu. Telo. Telo. Telo means my. Ultimate end. Apota ne nu telo. Apota ne nu telo. Simple na chhi telo is respond ne ma dilna. Apota ne nu telo. Telo means my ultimate end. What is my ultimate end? Apota ne nu. Apota ne means separation. I want separate from this world. A permanent separation is death. So this is I want to die. So this is my ultimate. A. This is my ultimate end. I am waiting for that. What do you think of that? So, apostasy. You know, is that that is? You have got English word apostasy. You have heard of that? Apostasy. Apostasy means one the act of relinquishing your faith. Suppose you believe in this thing, faith, and someday you leave it and go after another faith, then you say you are you are a, that is that situation is called apostasy. Apostles. So here, this is apost means separation. You are separated, separated from that faith. That's all. So here, final separation. Final separation is there. So look at this once again. You can see almost all these words are. You will find the. We have taken in English. Now, of course, not for for. This means for for. This means for for is a symbol. Possible uh, quit them in the in the kumis of kumi of kumi kumis ego I it said 
of Christmas eyes mine. It said that is reflexive herself with the soul. So uh, in Amla, in means in Amla means cage, cage are we getting this term? It said means herself. Herself with my own eyes. Pandere means hanging. Hanging. At Ili kum Ili means the, this. This boys, boy means boys. The charm means ask or son. Yet means hand. And when that's it. Sibul la, that is Sibul. 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 T means what? 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 What do, what is your ultimate end? Ultimate, ultimate wish, ultimate end. Then he says, responded, responded, she, uh, my ultimate end, ultimate wish is separation, separation from this. Well, so, so this is how it is explained. I think all the words are clear to you. Now it's clear. No doubt about this. So you can say, Nam Sibul Nam Kitam Kum is Ego Ipse Oklis Mei Vidi in Ambla Tempere. At Ili Kum, At Kum Ili Puri Dijeran Sibul Nam. Think the ladies. Respond them about Ila. About the name of the world. Imagine that situation that she is hanging like 4 kg. <laughs> Okay, what do you for it? It's clear the order I think is yes. Okay, very good. Now I told you what is the importance of Sibul, I told you. She is she was very beautiful, she was beloved of Apollo, she took uh, she is her person so you can you can see in Virgil's in it, in it youngest of the Trojan princess and uh, of course a cousin of Troilus and Hector and Paris, so they are cousins that day and uh, Hector, uh, Enes is very famous for his love for his father when Troy was in great confusion what happened he lost his wife but, uh, but he you can see that picture of uh, Enes carrying his father on his shoulders and escaping from Troy so that is uh, in fact you know something that something that we wish to see these days. You know? When these days what happens you can see when parents are old, parents become old, you throw them in a the corner of the house or take them to old age homes. See that in good old days he is considered as a is a considered as a paragon of virtue. In yes, as far as this particular situation is concerned. He carries his father, cannot walk, but he carries him on his shoulder. That's a very famous painting of Aeneas. Aeneas is the, is the hero of Aeneas. Yes. So, Sibyl is connected with the Aeneas in two ways. One, she promised that he would, found, he would be the founder of Rome. And secondly, she guided him through Hades. So, these are very important points to remember about Sibyl. Now, Sibyl... Uh, this prophetess, who said this? From where did, from where this quotation, from where did TSLA take this? That's the point. It's taken from Satyricon. Satyricon. So you may think that is Satyr, no? And I said Satyricon. The first century AD what? By Gaius, Ga, Gaius Petronius, Petronius Arbiter. That's his name, the other. What is his name? So now this Satyricon doesn't mean Satya. There may be elements of Satya in it, but it, it is taken, it comes from the word Satura. Remember I told you know Italian is also a phonetic. Latin is a phonetic language, Italian is a phonetic language. So Satura. Satura means a mixture. A mixture. Or we can say a medley. 
So here, in Satyagam we find pros and poetry. Some people when they refer to Satyagam, they will say, this is taken from the poem. <laughs> and some others say it is taken from the novel Satyagam. Both are there. Because you find both poetry and prose in Satyagam. Understand? This is a first century AD work. That is at the time of, during the time of Emperor Nero. Neronian era, you can say. It was written during the Neronian era and it deals with mainly the misadventures of a Roman gladiator through the Roman Empire. Different parts of Rome. Different parts of Rome. A gladiator's misadventure, you can say. That is. But here, these words, this quotation is spoken by a character in Satyricon. His name is Primachio. Primachio. Primachio is drunk. When he is speaking this, these words, he is drunk. He is drunk as drunk as a fish. So he is boasting to his guests. And what is his, that was his habit. He was a slave. By some means, for some dubious means, he became rich. Little rich person. So, once he became rich, what he does is second nature to call all his neighbors and friends and acquaintances and then give them lavish party stroke, lavish party stroke. And the party's exotic dishes were served. And he himself, and drinking and reveling, and he himself would be drunk. And then he would start boasting. So, Trimarchios, these words are boasting by Trimarchios. He says, Nam Sibyl Nam Kuddam Kumis, not any other Sibyl, but uh, this Kumis, Kumian Sibyl. I saw the Kumian Sibyl with my own eyes, Kumian Sibyl herself with my own eyes, hanging in a, in, a, in a cage. And when the children saw her and they asked her, what Sibyl, what do you want? Then she said, I want to die. But at the same time, you should remember, that he was in a drunken stage. So he was boasting. These words are his boasting. He's boasting to his friends, his relatives and so on. Understand? There are some people like that. They have never gone to Australia, but they all <laughs> some places. They are they have never climbed Everest. But they would say that, oh, last year I myself and my friends, we climbed Everest itself. Not any other mountain, but Everest. So it is like that. He said, uh, we have, I have seen Sibyl of Kumi, not any other Sibyl. Now, Trimalchio has said that he was drunk at that time. Okay, then the other is Gaius Petronius. Arbiter, because again I told you, you use phonetic language, so you have to pronounce all those uh, sounds or all those letters. It's not that the half of it is left out like a English neighbor and that and all those things, examples for that you know, isn't it? I may not tell you this. Now, what is the, what, what, what does this suggest, what does the epic that suggest? The, it, has many, it has given us many suggestions, see. For one thing, it starts with, I will say, one suggestion is tradition. Tradition, tradition. Because he was, he is in it, was very much fond of this tradition and individual talent. And what is tradition? Tradition, where will we find tradition? In the mind of Europe. Tradition, what do you call it? That is the mind of Europe. Mind of Europe. And where will we find the mind of Europe? In classical languages. So he starts with that. He starts with classical languages. Because he says here, I am a critic. I am not only, what, what I say, I practice. So I have started with the tradition. And what you are going to see is my individual talent. So yeah, that is a suggestion. Whether you agree with me, I don't know. That is that is my opinion. Okay. The second thing that you can notice, second suggestion. Second suggestion given by this epitaph. Sorry, epigraph. Epigraph, not epitaph. <laughs> See, at the end of this class, you don't write my epitaph. <laughs> that is, uh, you, this is, uh, we are speaking about epigraph. Yes. So this epigraph is that then, uh, that the Sibyl, what is importance of Sibyl here? Sibyl, as I told you, 
She is a prophetess. Prophetess. Sibyl, famous Sibyl. Sibyl of Kumi. A Kumi and Sibyl. Kumi and Sibyl. Kumi. She is Kumi. Now, what is the importance? What is the importance of Sibyl here? She is a prophetess. Understand? So, what do you expect is we are going to meet half a dozen prophets in this poem. This is a kind of suggestion. See? Who are the prophets you are going to meet? Ezekiel. You are going to meet Ezekiel. Isn't it? That Old Testament prophet. Then our friend and our madam, Madam Sasastri. Isn't it? Then Lord Buddha. Yes. Then you have got two in one, Tiresias. I, Tiresias, was forced all. That is, as a man as well as as a woman. Then you have got Christ. It's like the tortly red on sweaty faces. That is the reference to Christ. And you have got Pradyavati. Pradyavati is Datta, Dimyada, Deyatha. The last, uh, uh, almost the end of it. That is, see that. So that is, may, may, may be I said, you see, if you have, after reading this, if you, if you keep these things in your mind, then you can see, when you come across these characters, you will say, ah, this has got some link with uh, the epigraph, understand, yes. The third point is, that the, the satirical itself, I told you, it was, it is, it exists only in fragments, satirical, and also this is mental, eh? Mentally means a mixture of prose and poetry. So the same thing you find here, two aspects of this. That is, one is that the, that the, it, it is a mentally. 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 Or you can say mixture. Mixture. Isn't it? So you have got prose and poetry heroes. Hurry up please, it's time. Hurry up please, it is time. Prose. Right? But when you say April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of uh, out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with the spring rain, winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with uh, dried tubers, summer surprise, that's like beautiful poems, isn't it? And a masterly use of, I must say, brilliant use of enjambment you find. Enjam, enjambment. The beginning, what is enjambment means? Run on lens. Run on lens. Lens means like April is the coolest month breed. Lilacs out of the dead land stirring. To the mixing memory and they say. Stirring the roots. So that is a uh, run on lines. Beautiful word. Isn't it? So you have got this, uh, what I must say, a metal, a person. And you can see you now that cockney women, then they are saying, you know, what do they say? Why do you marry if you don't want children? See? If you don't want children, why are you marry for? That's it. So that these things are this pros, cockney. So you have got, what I must say, prose and poetry, a mixture of this. And also even colloquialism you will find in this poem. So that is another suggestion, is mentally. And the fourth suggestion is that then, you have got two classical languages. So more classical languages are to follow. More languages are to follow, you can say. More languages. And classical also, see. More languages. You have got a, in the beginning you will see Bin, Gar, Khain, Rusin, Russian, isn't it? You can expect. And then immediately after that you will find the strand and I saw the first where the wind, the helmet, so made Irish king, who will do, isn't it? Then, then what the next line is, oid only leave the smear, the German, quoted from the Czech Bible. Understand? And then you have, as you proceed further, you will find the uh, uh, languages used to say, for example, you have got Sanskrit. Right? You have got uh, Shandi, Shandi, Shandi. And of course, French, you have, got, you have it. Huh? Italian, 
He'll make your fabro. Dedication, Italian. French. End of the first uh, at the burial of the dead. You'll see now. Uh, you hypocrite lector. Mom semblame. Mom fre. Latin. Uh, sorry, French. So you have how many languages now? You expect. When you read uh, the ep epigraph, then <laughs> what happens is you think that uh, you must suggestion it. It gives a suggestion that wait, you are going to see some more languages. That's the thing. Like for example, already we have seen classical Latin, Greek, Russian, then German, then French, then Sanskrit. Understand? And then another very important point, these are my suggestions. I think I think the suggestion. That is, epigraph is a quotation. So you are going to meet quotations. A procession of quotations you will find. What are these quotations you have? More six more than 60 quotations taken from 40 different authors. So that is it. So you can expect like that. Quotations, yes. We expect quotations. Quotations. Understand? And number six, simple. The reference to simple again. It brings to your mind the great tradition of travelers. When travelers begin their journey, their voyage, there was a custom that they would go to symbols and then consult what would happen to them. What do, what might what might be their future? Will they go as a traveler and come back as a body, dead body? <laughs> as we see in modern times, you know, because of traffic congestion and all those things, what happens is you go saying good morning and bye bye to your family in the morning. Sometimes it happens that you have seen they come back as body. So they want to know. So consulting a symbol is a tradition. So the poet traveler, who is the poet traveler here? The poet traveler is TSLA. So he is the concern, the symbol, the importance of symbol comes there. So poet traveler keeps the tradition. The poet traveler, where is he traveling? In the? Traveling. Traveling in the? Where is he traveling? Poet is traveling in, in the wasteland. So what will happen? To, what might be? So that tradition, that's the thing. So Sibyl's presence is very important. The same that, that uh, you get a half a dozen, you expect Tiresias and other prophets and then the poet traveler, that's it. And uh, another seventh suggestion is that uh, mythical method. You suggest mythical method. Mythical. What is mythical method? First, uh, first used by Yule, James Joyce in Ulysses, 1922. 1922 Ulysses was published in 1922, this, uh, the wasteland also was published. So probably, I don't know uh, whether both of these writers, they mutually influenced uh, that, way, I do not know, but may, anyhow, this is there. So mythical method. And T.S. Eliot himself said that he has taken from myths, like Jesse L. Weston's The Great Legends, and also uh, James George Fraser's The Golden Bow. Great legend is, you know, this knight, the questing knight. He is going to, he is going in search of the holy grail. Isn't it? Holy grail. That's mythical, myth, myths used. And in uh, Fraser's book, he has taken this chapter uh, on uh, this uh, fertility gods. Like, uh, what do you must say? Uh, Adonis, Atis, and Osiris. So that is fertility gods. So that is reference to that as yes, mythical method. This mythical method, you know, that is juxtaposition. What is juxtaposition? Means side by side. As you can see, the modern, uh, the modern immoral world, the so-called immorality of this world is he, to protect that. See, what does, what does he has read that she, he has taken the myth of Philomel. Philomel myth, is you know? And still she cried, and still the world pursues jug, jug to dirty ears. So that's the thing. Understand? And there is another reference, another, another myth that is Actaeon and Diana. No? In a 
in a different way, you see. For, for from time to, for, at my back from time to time, I hear the sound of, sound of horns and motors, which will bring Sweeney to Mrs. Potter. Isn't it? Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Potter and her daughter. They washed their feet in soda water and immediately comes the chanting of, next to that gum, the chanting by children. Then the moment when the grey light and there's the chapel and then washes his son after washing his feet. So this is all juxtaposed. So that's interesting. Very intricately. That is, that is the attraction of the attraction of this poem also. How it has been uh, it has been structured in, in such a way that we will never get bored by reading. You read it for 50 times, still you will not get, can never get bored because each time you think there is something new you can find. So that is six, seven, seven situations. Seven situations, isn't it? Then another point or is that you know, I told you satirical is only in fragments. So a suggestion that eh, this poem, uh, Wasteland, poem number eight, fragments. Fragment. Fragmentation of this world and fragmentation of my poem. That's it. What you can do is you say no? Lion in the four hundred and thirty thirty. Yes, 430, no? because this is a very important line. What was that only 34, 434, this is 30, I think. That I said, these fragments I have shot against my ruins. So he himself says, Elit himself says that these are fragments. So these fragments I have shot against my so fragmentation. And uh, a ninth point is the world presented here is a is a top scene. Topsy-turvy world. Topsy-turvy world. There's no logic. No. You don't find any logic there. Huh? Now, topsy-turvy. Why? But uh, that I think is words are spoken by a uh, drunken fellow. Nam Sibullam Kudas. Kudam. Nam Sibullam Kudam Kumis. And then he stops or something. Because he's drunk. So, the world that you are going to see in the wasteland is also like that. <laughs> Swaying this way, in that way, because you are the unsteady world. An unsteady world, you can see. A topsy-turvy world. That's what you are going to see. Isn't it? So, these are some of the points I think that uh, I think the uh, epitaph, ep epigraph suggests. When you read the epigraph, and go into the meaning of the epigraph and take the import. See, when T.S. Eliot uses um, an epigraph like this, we should not think that he has taken it say, as it comes. No. Probably he must have done a lot of work on this. Finally, he selected this. And because he thinks that uh, whatever you find in the poem, he can mirror in this through this. Understand? So think of that. So classical tradition, mythical tradition, uh, tradition of prophets, tradition of going to the civil prophet for asking for uh, the what is their future journey before making a journey. They have got more languages. Yes, it's a mixture, and uh, you can see this. But you can see also in a very beautiful. Shakespearean sweetness and Spencerian, what I miss the Spencerian uh, melody, you can see. The, the second section, game of chess begins now. Uh, the, the chair she sat in like a burn, the chair she sat like a burnished sat in like burnished throne. What is the next line? The chair she sat in like a burnished throne. Load on the marble where the glass held up by standards wrought with the fruited wine, from which a golden cupola peeped out. And another hid his eyes behind his wings. Why 
the second one Hindi is eyes behind his wings you don't know that we will see as we proceed as we end as we start our way Arsh understand so before that we also will consult the Sibul because the Sibul is not going to die the Sibul cannot die and uh, the most important thing is I, I might have forgotten that that the trend and the most important that is death wish death wish see that so that is the denizens of the wasteland, they want to die. Uh, that's why they say now, April is the coolest month. But remember the April opening in Joseph's Cantor of the Canterbury Tales. One that April lay with the surest suite. Isn't it? The, and pierced to the drought of March. Isn't it? One that April lay with the surest suite. Uh, then uh, continue, uh, it continues and it says that it is a time of revival. Smaller fowler, smaller fowler make a melody. They don't sleep, they cannot sleep. Because all night they are singing. And pilgrims from different parts of the world come and assemble in Tabardin. They tell stories. It is, a, it, is, it is a period of great uh, what is a revival and enjoyment and people moving to different parts of England, especially they are going to all those things are there. But what about here? Death wish. Caught by a death wish. Hanging like the Sibyl after the First World War. Isn't it? What happens is, it is some historians said 10 million people died. I don't know whether that is true. It is an exaggeration maybe. But, and many many lost their homes and lost their jobs. In such a situation they say, what is that? Winter kept us warm. Covering earth in forgetful snow. And the denizens of wasteland, they are very happy with their dry tubers. So that is that wish. That is what we are going to see here. See, all if they ask you, start the journey, go into different places. See, guided by Tiyasali. Tiyasali is himself is a symbol, and we are all ANSs. See, we are going to the uh, going, getting into Hades. Or we can think like this. See, whether you agree with me or not. I don't know, I cannot say. You are all PhD students, you are research students, some of you. I have just thrown up these points for you to think. You all become think tanks and come back tomorrow. You go through the poem, read it 10 times, 15 times, 20 times. See, 1922 published in 2022, we will have to have the the celebration of this publication. See that? So get ready. We have to do something, we have to contribute something. Don't be shy of some um, critics, they start, when they start writing a book, they will say, oh, it's an apology. And they, are, they express an apology. Why should you express an apology? If you have got something to say, then you can say that. Understand? Being students, you must have something to say. Otherwise, what is the problem of becoming a student? See? You, therefore, my dear friends, I say, I will explain, I think, the epigraph, word by word, and I connected this epigraph with the English words, as far as possible, then Greek also, then I tell you, there is a 10 suggestions. Already you have written the line, I did not repeat it. I hope that you will read the poem, you will enjoy the poem, you will learn all the lines by heart. Isn't it? Eh? Because then you can go around um, reciting this poem, etc. I hope that you will be doing all these things, thinking that, or hoping that, or what to hope. This day says, no, wait without hope, for hope would be the hope for the wrong thing. So, whether I am hoping for the wrong thing, I don't know. Anyhow, thank you for attending this class and uh, tomorrow we will come back with your own fresh ideas. Okay? Bye.